We are just walking out of our discussion with the Oncology Brothers at the uh, live event, Advancements in Oncology, um, and I thought there were some really rich points uh, that were brought up in the muscle invasive bladder space. Historically, we used to do neoadjuvant chemotherapy, followed by cystectomy and adjuvant nivolumab with the DFS benefit in Checkmate 274. Now we obviously have the Niagara regimen, which is being referred to as this sandwich approach, so durvalumab plus neoadjuvant chemotherapy prior to cystectomy, followed by adjuvant durvalumab. And um, a lot has been said about ctDNA in this setting. Um, for the community oncologist, what are your takeaways of the muscle invasive bladder space and the data we've seen here at ASCO? Absolutely. Thank you for your kind words before. I would say for the practicing oncologist right now, the level of one evidence we have is for, for patients who are fit for cisplatin, cisplatin eligible patients who can get checkpoint inhibitor, the Niagara regimen is a standard of care. So GEMSYS plus Durvalumab, four cycles neoadjuvantly, radical cystectomy, lymph node dissection, and then up to eight monthly doses of adjuvant durvalumab. And the big question is, do you need the adjuvant component? And are we going to see interesting data tomorrow morning at the session for bladder cancer with we'll CDNA data incorporated in the Niagara data set. So it will be very interesting to see whether CDNA may or not be used to help guide that adjuvant decision making for the adjuvant immunotherapy. I think more to come in that regard because we have a worry about over treatment toxicity and cost, but also worry about under treatments. And what we have seen so far, based on the data from ASCO-GU, if you look at the Niagara data sets, patients who achieved pathologic complete response and those who did not achieve pathologic complete response, there appears to be benefit in both of those subgroups from the uh, durvalumab addition to uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy, and those patients continued, most of them, adjuvantly. So we have, of course, to see what happens with longer follow-up and with other clinical trials, but for the moment, GEMSYS durvalumab is standard of care. I want to make the point, this approach is for cisplatin eligible patients. This does not apply to cisplatin ineligible patients. I would not substitute carboplatin for cisplatin. So if you cannot use cisplatin, this is not applicable, I would say. And then the question is the cutoff creatinine clearance you use. In the Niagara regimen, they went down to 40 ml per minute, maybe with split doses, platin in those borderline cases. And that's a question how comfortable you are to give cisplatin in those GFR levels. And everybody has a different threshold. In Niagara, they went down to 40 ml per minute or higher.